Mandatory evacuations are in effect as the Beulah Hill wildfire continues to grow. We'll have the latest information coming up. And we do have red flag warnings in effect. We'll have a glance at wind speeds and much more still to come. Tonight, the presidential running mates take the stage to debate the latest in the race for the White House. Good afternoon. Thanks for joining us. I'm John Carroll. And I'm Dana Clements. You're watching KRDO News Channel 13. We're also live on the air on KRDO News Radio. Officials in Pueblo County are updating us right now on the Beulah Hill fire. Let's take you out live there now. We have 400 personnel on site. As you can see or as you've seen, uh, we have aerial now. We have helicopters in the air this afternoon. Uh, the acreage is currently at 4,800 acres and the cause of the fire is still under investigation. Now I'd like to turn it over to the incident commander, Paul Duarte. Hey, good afternoon, everybody. Um, thanks for coming. Uh, just a quick update on, on yesterday and today. Um, yesterday was a, a, a difficult day for local resources just due to the weather conditions. Um, they did an excellent job. Um, they were unable to fly any aircraft because the winds were, were over, over 40 miles an hour for many, many parts of the day, so that made it very difficult for them. Um, ultimately, they did an excellent job between Beulah Fire Department and all their cooperators um, with Pueblo County and all those um, other en entities. They did, they did an excellent job. So building off of yesterday and some of the successes that they had, um, we today have, have the ability to fly a little bit more, so we're currently flying uh, two helicopters. Uh, one type three, um, one type one helicopter. Um, we currently have two other helicopters on order, excuse me, one other helicopter on order, which should be arriving in the next hour or so. Um, we also have two single engine air tankers um, that are also in route, um, and those will be filling either out of Fremont County or Pueblo. Um, today's been a, a definitely a more successful day just due to weather. Um, we'll, we're uh, being cautious though, because there has been a red flag warning issued for today, so um, we're paying attention to that. Um, like was said, that we currently have 300, 400 folks, working up to about 400 folks, um, and that's a combination of folks from all over the state at this point, and so it's been a really good effort statewide. Um, take questions when we're done here. Thanks. Good afternoon, folks. Um, Kirk Taylor, Public County Sheriff. Uh, just. What we did yesterday uh, in, in asking for the state's help, once it exceeded our resources here locally, um, you know, we asked for the state's help, so that was really the transition that happened today going into the second operational period. Um, you know, I, I really just want to thank the community for their cooperation. It was a tough call to, to make to uh, any time you have to evacuate a community, and so that's, that's, tough. that's tough on the folks uh, to get their pets and stuff out. We're going to be as liberal as we possibly can uh, with respect to getting folks back into their residences. But as you can see, we just really started to kill this thing. And so the state's going to come in here. We're going to have a lot of resources that are going to be committed to this, uh, this venue. <clears throat> we're going to get after it pretty hard today. Uh, we're going to see where it's at uh, probably early afternoon. And until then, I really can't give the community an idea of when we're going to be able to repopulate. And so I, I know that's on everybody's mind. I know everybody wants to get back to their homes. I don't blame them. I would ask for your patience uh, in doing so, and we will keep you informed as much as we can. Um, I want to thank the, all the task force that came out of North. We got, we got task force help from uh, the South uh, Metro. Task force came down. We had a task force out of Longmont. I, I'm sure I'm going to leave somebody out. Um, we had the city of Pueblo was just instrumental in, in a lot of the structure protection that we had last night when we were kind of waiting to stand up our, our state partners and do the transition this morning. Um, I just can't say enough about the structure protection. That we, I, Unfortunately, we lost seven homes. Fortunately, we didn't lose any lives and no one's been injured so far, knock on wood. Um, so that's really of, of extreme importance to me. Um, in thanking these folks. They, they work diligently and are continuing to work diligently. Uh, structure protection usually doesn't come out of the city. This is a pretty far and they have to really be careful with their resources so they can cover the city. So it's really uh, it's like balancing plates. And so I want to thank them and, and all the folks that came from up north, a lot of whom are still here. So uh, 
thanks to the Red Cross, Salvation Army is getting us fed and watered. I know everybody wants to collect food and water and, all, and do all that, and we very much appreciate it. We don't have, uh, we, we just don't have any place to put it right now. That's going to become important for the community as we repopulate, as people come back to their homes, as they've lost their homes, that they are able to. Uh, to get some help from the public. So we'll set all that up through the Emergency Operations Center in Pueblo. So please be patient. I know there's a lot of frustration, um, but we're working as hard and as diligently as we can. And we're working together, and nobody's gotten hurt. We, you know, we lost some structures, but uh, you know, so far, we've got some air support in here today, and we're gonna kill this thing. Okay, thank you. Good afternoon, everyone. My name is Denea Esgarn, and the state representative for this area along with Pueblo. But first and foremost, I have many friends and family who live in Beulah. So this was really heart-wrenching for me to see what's happening. And as the state representative, I wanted to come see firsthand what was going on. And I can't thank the sheriff enough for allowing me to go with him this morning. I've been touring around the area with the fires. And as sad as it is that we've lost seven structures, I can't thank the people that are on the front line enough for the number of structures they have actually been able to save. It's, it's been a, really an amazing journey to go through and see the hard work um, of all of the firefighters that are down here. Some are volunteer, I wanna remind people of that as well. And there's people from across the state that are coming to Beulah to help make sure that we protect even more structures and get this fire put out. I also had the opportunity last night to witness the behind the scenes work and I wanna thank those people as well I went to the Emergency Operations Center last night for a few hours and really saw all the people behind the scene that are working hard to protect this community. So I just want to let the people of Beulah know there's a lot of people on your side, including myself, who are making sure we're doing everything we can and getting every resource possible to protect your homes while you're out safe of this area. Thank you all. So we'll take a few questions. Uh, the current acreage is 4,800 acres. Is it seven homes? How will those homeowners be notified if it was their uh, residence in this lot? Uh, right now we're doing an assessment. We don't want to get ahead of the game. It's almost like uh, contacting the coroner before we have the identity. So we want to make sure that we have the exact same structures that we think we have right before we contact the owner so that assessment started this morning they're almost done with it I expect early afternoon they're going to be done uh, we have a team out in the field right now that's confirming those structures and also uh, uh, trying to get the the other structures that aren't homes the outbuildings and those types of things so we should have an accurate count for you this afternoon uh, the other thing I didn't say earlier was uh, I've been contacted and I want to thank the outpouring from the uh, from uh, Cory Gardner's office. He, uh, Cory Gardner's office called me. Um, I've had contact with Senator Bennett's office and also Congressman Tipton. So thank those folks for for lending a hand. And and that's some of the work that goes on behind the scenes. Can you just repeat how much air support you guys have, and would you like to be getting any more of that, or is this it for the rest of the time? Um, no. So what we currently have is the two helicopters that you're seeing behind us. Um, we have two additional helicopters um, that are in route two single-engine air tankers that are in route also. Um, we have also have an air attack platform, which is kind of the, the air supervisor. And then we have the multi-mission aircraft from um, the Division of Fire Prevention and Control. You guys did a big, you guys did a big uh, exercise up here with this kind of stand just about a year ago, right? I mean, how, how much does that help you guys prepare for this? You know, I, I had forgotten about that until I was re remanded, reminded last night uh, and by the school district that uh, we had done that exercise and how much it had really helped. Uh, we had a smooth evacuation of the, of the children from Beulah School. I was very happy with uh, working with our partners at 70. So I think the exercising helps a lot. I mean, I always say you don't uh, rise to the level of your expectations, you fall to the level of your training. So we train a lot for these types of scenarios, hoping that we'll never have to use them, but uh, in this case it helped. So uh, we, we were hoping to have better weather today. Um, the wind's the biggest thing that's affecting us. And so ultimately, um, if we can get winds to kind of calm down, which are, are forecasted for the next couple of days to diminish. And so as long as that happens, we'll be in pretty good shape. Um, there's no foreseeable uh, moisture. There's no moisture in the foreseeable future. So um, that's unfortunate. But um, just as long as the winds don't get 
like they were yesterday. What is the terrain like that you guys are fighting through right now? So it's really varied. And so, if, you know, folks that have been on the foothills, you know, out to the east, we've got, you know, grass and, and some open plains down there. But then we do have some fairly steep canyons that folks are dealing with. And then, like you see behind us here, um, we have some pretty rough country. Um, there's a lot of fuel loading in some of those areas. And so it's definitely rough country. Um, not accessible by engines everywhere. And so that, hence, we're getting um, quite a few hand crews in to come assist. So is that kind of how you're planning, how you're changing your plan of attack based on where the fire is right now? Yeah, definitely. We want to use the right resource in the right for the right place. And so ultimately where engines can function around structures and that type of stuff, we'll use them there. Um, where they're, it's inaccessible, we'll have hand crews working um, in coordination with the helicopters and the air tankers. And right now, is the plan just kind of trying to contain what's going on right now? I mean, you guys haven't started any back burning or anything as of yet? Yeah, we haven't done any burning up to this point. So the way you kind of look at it when we're fighting fires around structures is we kind of work from the inside out. So we go to those structures, we work from those structures, protect those structures, and then start working our way out. As we get some of the air tankers coming in, we'll do some perimeter checks with those so that we can check the spread with them. But right now we'll be working mainly protecting structures, and then we'll start hitting on the perimeter as soon as we can. Any idea how many additional structures are threatened? Do you have the number? Um, everything that was threatened yesterday, we still consider threatened today. I mean, obviously some of the stuff that's in the black already that had really good knockdowns that, that the departments did is are fine. Um, but ultimately, we still have the potential for a lot of structures um, with wind shifts and high winds that they could be affected. Which way is the fire spreading right now? So ultimately, um, we hope to have a better map for you here soon. The, the multi-mission aircraft is grabbing some data, but the info that we're seeing is the fire's grown pretty much in all directions up to this point. We don't have a one sustained front. I mean, the winds were really squirrely yesterday, so it's grown a little bit in every direction. like a fire that you've been waiting for is this you know like burn that has needed to happen at this point I, I don't know how to answer you have to ask chief where um, you know obviously where we live in Colorado the potential for fire is always high and it gets the higher it gets uh, you know in elevation and into the mountains the, the higher that potential comes so we have done some mitigation efforts uh, in this community since the the uh, uh, Mason Gulch fire in years past um, but yeah, I, I, that's kind of a hypothetical we can't address. Okay, so that concludes this briefing. We're planning on having another briefing at 4 o'clock. We'll put out a press release from the Joint Incident Command in Pueblo to let you all know when, uh, where that will happen. Um, but for any further information or the most up-to-date information, uh, follow Facebook, the Pueblo County Sheriff's Office on Facebook and Twitter. Thank you all for being here. Well, can we just have you say and spell your name? Sure. Uh, you've been uh, listening to an update and uh, watching officials in Pueblo County give us the latest information on the Beulah Hill Fire. Now at 4,800 acres and seven homes have been destroyed. They said they don't know when they can let people back into their homes just yet. They are hitting it hard today. They have two helicopters in the air making water drops. They have another one ordered. They're hoping to be more successful today because of the weather. Yesterday we saw that efforts were hampered by those strong winds. But again, today we are under red flag warning. Storm Tracker 13's Abby Oconee.